Good evening, and welcome to tonight's On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers. Tonight's show is two hours long, and once again we are live, so if you have any comments, questions or suggestions during the show, text them to us, just text EDGE, a space, and then your name, location and your message to 8778, and we'll try to pick up on any that really hit the mark. They're all charged at standard rates, so why not get texting now? In tonight's show, I'll be talking with John James Harris, a man who has formally declared himself to be a freeman of England within common law, which has apparently opened up very many intriguing possibilities for him and for everyone watching. What a show we've got tonight. John, welcome. Hi. So, uh, two hours we've got to explore this subject, yeah, so I think we well, can, least, we can yeah, take a little subject. bit of a breath and, and just find out a little bit about you to start with. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm basically a, a carpenter, a builder. I was self-employed. Um, I really enjoy it as well. Really enjoy the building trade. Watched it get smashed to pieces, as most things that have happened in this country. Um, I'm not all good as well, a lot of the things that have gone on concerning the building trade. And one of the sad things about the building trade as well is it's the first thing that gets hit when things start to get a bit upset, if you like. Um, it certainly is being hit right yeah, now, smashed isn't it? to pieces, yeah. And it's, um, I just, as growing up, I just, I don't know, I just never fitted into anything. I never fitted any slot, if you like. Um, so would you say that you always questioned everything? Yeah, I didn't, it, yeah, questioned, mm. I just questioned, I thought it was me. I thought there was something wrong with me. And they thought there was something wrong with me as well. Um, Who's they? Teachers? Uh, yeah, everybody. They okay. just... Everybody, you know, there's something wrong with you, pull yourself together, you know, you know, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing... And it was like, already without even knowing what a conspiracy was, it was like I was living in one. But I just, I didn't even know what conspiracies were. Like living in the Matrix? Nah, nah. No. Nah. Yeah, no. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people ref reference to what we talk about to the Matrix. It's, it's one of the ways of um, uh, dismissing what we say and a very clever way of doing it as well. OK. Well, that wasn't my intention. I... But it's a clip. But yeah, it's quite okay. a clever way of doing it. No, um, yes, definitely a world of illusion, without doubt. Um, a world that is very much one thing that we believe it to be, but actually operates in a completely different way. Well, let's let's just go back into you as a as a person dis on this journey for a moment, if mm. we can. What I'd like to explore with you is. You know, okay, you felt different. Yeah. You asked questions. Yeah. How and why did you start discovering things? And what did you start discovering? What were the things that you first of all became aware of that kind of set you on the path <laughs> to becoming a free man? Um, I suppose one of the, the first things that ever um, struck me was the fact that I just could not be successful in business no matter what I tried. It was like I was just not meant to do it. And um, I just couldn't do it, and it was strange, and I could never work out why. There was no, never a reason. And I went to do a job. I was working for um, a company, and I went to cut a roof, pitch a roof down uh, local to us. And there was a lad there who went to university, and he gave me a film to watch. He said, "Just have a watch of this film and just see what you, you know how you feel about it." So it was Loose Change Two, obviously about 9/11. Right, of course, yes. Up to that point, up to watching that film, I was completely oblivious, and I still was after watching it the first time. What, it just went over you? Yeah, or? I just, yeah, okay, yeah, there's something going on here. Well, yeah, I'm trying to like, so I watched it again, and there was one bit that stuck in my mind was a camera. And the camera was hundred, hundreds of feet off the floor, it was in a building adjacent to the towers as they were burning. When uh -huh. the towers came down, the camera shook before the towers came down. So it just said, you know, I just said to myself, well, there must have been an explosion. That's, and that's all, all it did amount to, that the mustard saint must have exploded before the towers. And then being in the building trade, thought to himself, well, what could explode? In that building, what could explode? Couldn't really find, in my own reasoning, that anything that could explode to that magnitude that would destroy a building of, you know, that size. 110 storeys. Yeah, big building. Or two of them. I got what, caught up in that three. for a little bit. I got kind of gatekeepered. Do you, do you know the term gatekeepering? Explain what you mean by that. Gatekeepers are like... If you get something like 9-11 where there's a lot of controversy concerning the official version of what happened, and then people start to come forward and give their versions of what happened. 7-7, exactly the same. Well, we've done programmes on both those subjects. Yeah. Um, 
So these, so what the official version is, is, is not what the people who really experienced what was going on and experts in the field, blah, blah, blah. OK. So the cons you, 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 you've got um, a lot going on inside people trying to cover things up. So what they, the easiest way to do it, because there's obviously some form of cover-up going on, whoever, it, who it's by, I ain't got a clue. I don't want to anticipate, I don't want to tell, say anybody's behind it. I don't believe it's terrorists for a start. I don't believe <coughs> in te that Al-Qaeda or whatever. But what I do know is something went on. And uh, so they start a thing called a conspiracy theory, which is great, because the second you talk about it, someone will label you nutter. And it happens every time. No matter what you talk about, the Freemasons, 7 7, anything you want to talk about, if you're talking about something that's locked into the word conspiracy, then people will label you as being a nutter and what you're saying has no value whatsoever. So they create the conspiracy and then they get people to get trapped in the conspiracy. And what happens is you just go round and round in circles. And then this is the gatekeeper thing. Yeah, the gatekeeper is because it doesn't matter if someone comes <clears> in and, like, anyone could come in and say to you, right, I've seen this. Come and have a look at it. Oh no, I'm just going to keep going round and round in circles because we're finding information out. Well, what you're finding out is what happens. This it that, that it that, blah blah blah. Okay. The only two important questions to ever ask is who and why, and perhaps who benefits. Exactly. But who Cubono. and why? Because there's only there. There must be a reason. Who's who's benefit from why? You know, a, an atrocity like that would happen. The same as seven seven. So when you realise what happened in law after that, and that you, we got terrorist laws, quite draconian terrorist laws in both countries after both events. Mm -hmm. But when you look at them laws in a different way, you see that they developed a law to protect you from something that they say exists, when the real actual fact of the matter is they developed a law to protect themselves from you, when you find out what really did happen. And what's happening worldwide is people are finding out what really did happen. And they're not using their thoughts to do it anymore. They're using realisation, feelings. So they're saying, I feel something happened. Oh, this is very interesting. This is, is this like <coughs> the fact that, you know, people resonate with the truth? That they, have a, they have a visceral... The truth does a resonate visceral with resonance with the truth, far more than well, being intellectually told something. Yeah, but if you're going to cover something up, then you create lies. And you lock them lies in knowledge. And then what you, you teach people to do is to use knowledge to control knowledge. Now, the world is abound with knowledge, but it's no wisdom. And if you use wisdom to control knowledge, your wisdom will separate the knowledge from the lies. It will separate the truth from the lies and allow you to keep it. But you've got to have the recognition of that yourself. It's no good me saying to you, this is the truth. You've got to realise it's the truth in yourself. So, of course, everyone's got to find their own truth. Absolutely. And, and we all walk different paths. That is not a given, is it, that everyone's truth is the same truth? No, of course it's not. Which is a, a difficulty, isn't it, if, for instance, you are, shall we say, a conspiracy theorist. Well, no, and, not everyone thinks the same truth. And I don't think that is a dirty truth. word, but... but no. If, so you were a conspiracy theorist. I mean, the, the thing yeah, about 9-11, for instance, and 7-7 and so on, is that there are several theories which are not the official theory of what happened mm. on that day or those days. So which of those alternate theories should one believe? That's the point, it's locked away. You, you're using lies and knowledge. Because you're, you're, all you're concerned about is the theories, which the theories are what happens. Forget what happens, it's why it happens, and who did it, and for what reason. That's all you need to worry about. And you're, you're, the realisation within you will tell you that it was done for a specific reason, what happened uh, occurred afterwards, classic, it's all theatre, it's illusion. It's, it's, it's the, classic, the classic way that any illusion was performed on, on a stage when theatre first hit, hit the world. Magic tricks. No, well, it's not magic tricks. Well, it's, it's like, a, it's you mentioned, when, when we spoke on the phone, you mentioned the prestige, didn't you? Which yeah, is but you've the... got the pledge of the turn and the prestige. So the pledge is, they pledge you something. This tower exploded and terrorists did it. Yeah, mm. OK, I'm buying that. Right. The turn is we need this new law because it's going to protect us from them ever doing it again. OK, that's absolutely fine. I accept that as well. But the prestige is when you look at the law, it's a complete and utter draconian lockdown on every freedom you were given when you were born. That's why when you talked about the Charter of Liberties, you talk about a document, a Charter of Liberties. It's a grant. They're granting you something. They're giving you something. It's giving you something you already possess that no man on this earth has a right to take away.
Hmm. Freedom's not about liberties. Liberties is a grant. Rights are a grant. You've, that's so, why people get so confused, because they, they, they... The Charter of Liberties, the most famous document in the world, Magna Carta 1215, set up the world we live in now. Set it up. But people can't see it because they're locked into lies and the way... You say about the truth, the truth resonates because it will resonate in different sections when you, you land on the truth. So when you, it's like, you land, imagine a game of Monopoly, because that's basically what we live in, a game of Monopoly. OK. Monopolisation. Mm -hmm. It's all it's about, it's monopolisation. Greed, materialism, egotism, the new churches, shopping centres, the new religion, money. OK, so just to get back then to your journey, if we, mm. if we may, because I think that's a nice way of describing where we are now when we finally get to that point. Um, so you saw um, Loose Change 2. Yeah. And you watched it twice, and something dawned on you that it wasn't what you thought it was, and then you felt that, that you were being held by some gate... Gatekeeper from, no, from learning no, more. No, I didn't at the time. Or... Didn't at the time. Didn't even know what a gatekeeper was. Didn't understand anything. I was still completely oblivious to everything. So what was your next stage then? I wanted to find out, and I didn't want to use the lies and knowledge of the internet. There's a lot of lies and knowledge. There's a lot of truth out there, but you've got to wade through so much rubbish to get to it. Um, so I wanted to design something in a way, I suppose. I wanted to build something that would allow people to come to me and give me information. Because I don't like reading things. I read law. That's about all I read. I read law because I find it funny. You find it, it funny? It, it's very funny. Yeah, when you read it the way I read it, it's hilarious. you just got to read it right. Um, but I read law, and I've read law books as well. I read their law books because their law books are even funnier. Who's they? You mean the um, The Law Society. Oh, the the law, law Society's law books. Yeah, OK. Yeah, if you read their books, you know, I mean... Um, OK, the classic, there's a classic example in the, the latest uh, um, Black's Law Dictionary 8, and they define a person, and they say a natural person. How can you define a word with a word? How can you define what that, the, that word with the same word? You can't. It's a mockery. It's if you like go in Black's Law Dictionary 3, you'll see that person is a fiction. Let's talk about that, then. Let's talk about the person. Yeah. And how we understand the person in society. Well, what do you society? think a person is? Well, it's not, it doesn't matter what I no, think. No, what John. do you think a person, a person is? I'm asking Well, you I'm a, a person, you're a person. Are you? Well, I believe I am. You're not yes. a human being, you're a person. Well. Or does it mean the same thing? Well, I, my understanding from, you know, from when I was a child is that a person <laughs> and a human being yeah. are the same thing. Same thing, okay, right. So, in law, you're a human being. But in the legal world, commerce, you're a person. That's the difference. OK. And what's, jurisdiction... what is the difference, then? Just calling me a different name? The, 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 it's the way you're treated massively. It's about jurisdiction. Solely about jurisdiction. In common law, common law is, is, is upon the human being. In, in fleet, commerce, admiralty, whatever you want to call it, UCC code, whatever then your person is a fiction. But the jurisdiction, what they need to do is to get you to act, to, for you to represent that fiction. You've got a limited company. It doesn't exist in the real world. It's not real. Well, let's talk about the distinction then. If there is a distinction between human being and person... Yeah. Um, what does this actually mean? <laughs> a lot. Okay. It, basically, you, you get locked into slavery. So you're saying that because laws are made for persons... Statutes, yeah. Statutes, not laws, statutes. Yeah, what's a statute? Well, OK, you tell me. Well, uh, take a statute. A statute is an act of parliament, yeah? So mm -hmm. they put an act of parliament, becomes statute, gets registered on a statute roll, yes. OK? And it's, what, it's what most people would describe as a law, isn't it? They would, but, but they don't know what law is. That's the point. And you do? No, I just see it from a different angle. OK. And I'm going to give you the angle I see it from. OK. OK? That's... Please uh, do. <laughs> That's right, we're here. <laughs> right? <coughs> but it starts as a bill. Well, a bill is a money-making order. It's a negotiable instrument. When you look at 
any statute law that's on the statute books, it's enacted by statutory instruments, another negotiable instrument. A statutory instrument defined is a created, written, legal contract. Mm -hmm. So it's not law, it's a contract. It's something they, are uh, they can apply as fictitious upon fictitious persons. So, now, so they make us into fictitious persons. persons. And then they can apply these statutes on it. Because there's, the statutory law does not apply to human beings because it's not law until it's consented to by, by the, the governed. Statute is law that only becomes the force of law if it's consented to by the governed. So with 3,000... By, by the governed? By the governed, you. Yeah, you're the governed. So I can say that to anyone who wants to enforce a statute upon me... Yeah. If I choose, I can say I don't consent. You can say that, but you're being made an offer. So it has to come in contract form. So you're being made an offer. So what they'll do is they'll offer you something. And in, in a contract, there has to be offer, consideration and acceptance. So you have to be made the offer, you have to consider the offer, and you have to con accept the offer. I'm not aware of having been made any offers about any statutes. Oh, no, 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 but you are being made an offer okay, because well, commercial law works that way. And you're saying it's all commercial law, that every statute is the statute law to was law. wrote specifically for, the, min for the, the powers that be to manipulate, to protect themselves, to do exactly what they wanted to, to create and to control us as, as if we were in slavery. It's the evolution of slavery, that's all it is. It's very, very simply done as well. But you just... You have to look at the law and you look at the great laws that have gone through in this country, the Declaration of Rights, 1688, stroke 89, Bill of Rights, Act of Settlement, uh, the Act of Union, all these documents that are these very, very powerful, famous statutes that are still... One of them is still in the law books. Oxford's law book, just recently, of... Um, they brought one out and it's still in there and it still names the Act of 1701, the Act of Settlement, because it is so important to what they do and what they've actually achieved with that. And they needed, they needed these statutes in place. The statute law is very, very... It's not... It's right in the form of a constitution. If you look at, you look at what constitutions are, the, the fundamental princi principles a government adopts to make conform, uh, for society to conform to. Society being the biggest word there, being the socially dominant members of any community. Also translated as a, as a partnership, where all, all, parts, all uh, parties have to consent. So, if I get this right then, what you're saying is that, uh, apart from laws, which are different, statutes, are all passed with some sort of presumed consent from us. No, 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 absolutely not, no. OK, excuse me. <laughs> a statute law is a negotiable instrument, it's a bill, it's a money-making order, right. right? The government, as being the Cabinet, the Privy Council, <clears throat> will take the statute and they'll meet at number 10 with the bankers and they'll sell it to them. Hmm. So they pass a law, yeah. a statute? No, they pass, they make a contract, it's not law. It's okay. a contract. Okay. They get this contract and they'll go to the bankers and they'll say to the bankers, the private sector, they'll say, we've got this statute and we reckon it's worth six billion. Well, for instance, That's... it might be something like we're going to put up speed cameras everywhere. Ideal example, OK? okay. We've got this statute, we reckon it could generate a revenue of about six billion. That's fine. Okay. Per annum. Per annum. Okay. Will you lend us that on the strength of that, but we'll give you everything in excess to cover the principal sum plus the interest. So what they do is they sell it. They sell it to the bankers for the money. In advance of passing the law? In passing the st not passing the law. Statute. It's not, yeah, it's not a law, it's a statute. So what happens is, you, you, they sell this to the bankers, they've then got the police as two different things. The police are... The human being is um, a policeman or woman who is there to uphold the law, serve and protect, never deny or delay right or justice to any individual who lives in this country, no matter where they're from. Then you've got the police officer. Now, a police officer is a fiction. A police officer is a corporate employee who's enforcing statutes to make sure the bankers get their money back. Now, they need then these corporate courts. And then you get corporate... You go into a corporate court... And a cor they're not called corporate courts, are no, they? No, 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 But if you want to do the research, which I'll tell you about later, and you can go and do it... They, the people at home who've got in the internet can go and do this right okay. now, if they want to, all right? The corporate court is then there to get jurisdiction over you to make you pay. Because they need you to pay. Because without your 
money, and we'll talk about money as well, because that's okay. quite funny. But without your money, they can't pay, the back, pay back the bankers. But if you're saying that these statutes require your consent... They've got to get consent from you. So... Have they not already got consent? How can they possibly So get... how, how do they go through the process of getting okay. consent fixed without you being fine. aware fixed of it? Fixed penalty fine. Classic. Fixed penalty fine. Right? OK. A fixed penalty notice. Right. A notice is an offer. They're offering you something. You're going back to the definition now of the word yeah, notice. but this is legalese. This is a different language. Let's do this. this is a okay, language well, of the law society. OK, let's, let's go back to this. Let's look at the word notice. What does notice mean? It means it's an offer. Basically, they're offering you something. And what they'll do is they'll offer you something. They're offering you the ability to pay them some money. So That's it's a contract. They're making you an offer. You've got to consider it, and there's a consideration built in, and the consideration is that if you pay within seven days, then it's half the price that we're saying it is. And if, but if you don't pay within a certain tw 24 days, whatever, 14 yeah. days, it's the price that we're saying it is. Right. right. Very cleverly done. You've been offered something, the chance to pay them some money because you've, you're in statutory violation, OK? You're in violation of the statute because you've sped, presumably, or well, whatever you've yeah, done. Yeah, OK. You're parked on right. a yellow line. Or... They lock into the contract the consideration. You know, there's a consideration. If you pay now, you don't have to worry about it. But also what they're locking is an estoppel by acquiescence. And you stop Well, let's do this slowly. An estoppel by acquiescence. Yeah, basically, if you, if, if you ignore it, then you agree to the terms. OK. If you, you ignore it, you agree. If you ignore it. What estoppel means is basically, if you do not answer or offer back, because you can't dishonour it, you've got to offer back. This is contract law. You can't go into dishonour. So, OK. So if, for instance, say you, you get a ticket for speeding and it has this offer and uh, you don't want to uh, be subject to it, what do you do next, then? You offer something back. What? Like a, a button? If you want it. <laughs> Wouldn't work. OK, well, talk us through it, then. Well, if you, if, you, if you... First thing you do is say, well, you're trying to talk... You're, the wording on the document, what will happen is that the original fixed penalty notice is you'll send a letter off. So what you do is you write the letter very specifically. You don't use misters, you don't use postcode. If you do put your postcode, put it in a box capital. Anything in four corners doesn't exist in commercial law. So you put square brackets round? Yeah, anything in four corners does not exist. OK. So what you do is... This is, this is written somewhere in law, isn't it? Go and look it up. Go and look up the four I'm corner rule. I'm asking a question. Yeah, go and look up the four corner rule. Go and look it up now. OK, the four Get corner rule. Get the internet, look it up, find out what the four corner rule so is. So you can put your name in that if you want. Absolutely. It means it doesn't exist. OK. Right? Mm -hmm. That means it's a legal entry. So what you're doing is you're reversing that. What you're saying is, I don't exist. I'm, you're talking to a human being, you're not talking to a person. You're mm -hmm. talking to a human being. OK. Did this human being produce you any form of evidence to prove who they are? are you, you're asking the question of them? Yeah, you ask them questions. What you do is you have to put, the que you have to put it in question form because that's how you offer back. So you ask them a series of questions. Right, OK. Um, and you adapt the questions to what your needs are. A classic example was, we go to a restaurant and we eat a meal, and a restaurant, the, um, the waiter comes up and says, here's a notice of how much your, your meal was tonight. Would you okay. pay it or ask for a bill? Uh, I'd probably ask for a bill, wouldn't I? Yes. You'll so be given a notice, you'll be given an offer. A summons, if you look at a summons, summons is legally synonymous with the word invitation. When you get notice of summons to go to court, you're being given an offer to go to their place of business. You're being invited. You've got a choice. So, I think we're going to have to go to a break now, John, and we're going to get back to this. So, we're going for the break. If you'd like to text in your questions or comments for John Harris, why not do so now? Text the word EDGE, your message to 8778. Please keep it short, because the long ones get cut off. See you very soon. Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest tonight, John Harris. John. We were just talking about when you get a notice in the post for some offence that you've committed, which is mm. subject to a statute, and you're saying that the notice that they send you is an offer. It is, yeah. And as such, you can make a counter-offer. Absolutely. 
or ask questions. Yeah, but you, yeah. What, yeah. what, okay, let's put it in your, put the ball in your court. What would you do? Say you were driving down the road and a camera went flash and you got in the post, you got uh, a notice, an offer. Yeah. To pay them X amount of money, or if you pay within seven days, half of that money. What would you do? I would write, I would personally just write to whoever's issued the ticket and I would just explain to them in very simple terms that they're, they're talking to a person and, and the person doesn't exist, they need to talk to the human being, the human being was driving the car, not the person. Um, you, you, the jurisdiction they're trying to apply, apply upon me is, is a fleet admiralty jurisdiction. Well, I don't fleet exist admiralty, so this is yeah. admiralty law. It's admiralty law. Think, if, if you want... Funny enough, we, we went for it yesterday and it's really quite funny. Look at the word bank. You know, bank directs the current directs the currency. It's, you know, it deposits on the bank. It withdraws from the bank. It's, it's all to do with water. Think of a, a woman, the child comes from the waters down the birth canal and gets birthed and then a certificate of registration. It's, it's all, it, all, all it's the all words. It's based on ships. Yeah, it's all admiralty stuff. Yeah, it's all you've got to do. But they call it fleet because the fleet basically left this country and went over to about 52 other countries and developed and employed exactly the same system. And the original prison that the Botany Bay um, inhabitants come from was a, a prison in London called Fleet, on Fleet River. Oh, right, of course, yeah. So that was basically where it come from. OK, so you would write back as a human being. Absolutely, yeah. Not as a person. No, because I'm not a person. Well, we'll get to that bit. We'll get to your how you became a free man in a bit. But uh, you would write back and you would say... What would you say? What would you make an offer? A yeah, it's... But you'd ask them some questions. Are you aware that you're dealing with a human being, not a Yeah, I'd ask them person. also as well. I would, I would just give them, give them enough information to work on. They'd probably send back to me um, and say, you know, we don't understand what you're saying, blah, 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 which is what they do. So you just keep asking them questions. You just literally, that's all you keep doing. And you just keep asking them questions. You know, basically, prove who I am. Prove it. Show me evidence that you can prove who I am. But well, you can't prove it. Is that along the sort of lines of how do you know I was driving the car? No, 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 because you're dead. I, I will openly admit I was driving the car. So you'll say in the letter that you write as a human being... Yeah. ...that you were driving the car, you're not... OK, I'll give you an example, right? In yeah. common law... In common law versus based upon natural law, okay. there is no offence for spe speeding cameras. There is no offence. I haven't committed a crime. Well, it's not likely to have been in the magnet no, class, no, 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 no. Common law extends right up to this day. It works okay. on three very basic principles. Injury, harm or loss. There's okay. that. It's crime. A crime is in winning common law. If you do a common law... If you do something wrong against common law, then you, you should have your collar felt. Absolutely. But you're not going to go to a, a court of justice. You're going to go to a corporate court. So this is what, sorry, injury... Harm. Injury, harm or loss. or loss. So you can't... You should never injure someone, never harm someone or cause them loss. Or their property, presumably. No, but it covers every eventuality. Just those three words. Just those three injury, words. harm and loss. Right. So you're driving too fast down the road, you're not causing any injury... Absolutely. ..unless you hit somebody, in which case that becomes... Well, yeah, I'm liable. Yeah, common law. we end up. So you, you haven't caused any injury. No. Uh, what harm have you done? Nothing. No harm. Uh, and what loss, loss have you caused? There's no loss. No loss. Absolutely. So what you've got is you've got. So what, what's the, you know, what's the damage? Exactly. But <laughs> what, what we're talking about the difference between a statutory violation, and a crime. What they're trying to say to you is you've committed a crime, but you haven't committed a crime because a crime only exists in common law. Okay. And because they do accept this, do they? The powers that be do it. You had some fun with them. You had some fun with the police. One of our members has just recently had some real fun with. Um, a couple, a couple of police officers. Uh, it was very... I would ask... See, if I was pulled up by the police, which I have been, and recently for a seatbelt, which I won't, I'm not, I won't go to their court of law because they've got no jurisdiction over You were not wearing a seatbelt? Yeah. And now okay. you're going to shoot the messenger. Everybody does. <laughs> no, what... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm simply asking the question. The question is... That what people, I got shot to pieces, and it was quite funny, actually. Um, right. My view about a seatbelt is... It's my choice. Everything is about choice. If I make the wrong choice, OK, and I go through a windscreen, well, that's what was meant to happen. That's how I look at things. I don't well, look... this is like karma or something? This is like a sort it's of It's not Buddhist... karma, it's called synchronistic recognition. OK. 
Synchronicity is normally when coincidences occur, isn't it? Absolutely, you learn That's from your Jung, mistakes. Isn't it? Yeah, you just love Jung. Yeah, but you just learn from your mistakes. It's not from anybody, it's just something I... Because I don't read any of these books about... People say, have you read this book? No. But you talk like this person does. Well, well maybe I do, but I haven't read his book. OK. So you dis you've made a choice not to wear a seatbelt. I made a choice, yeah, not to wear a seatbelt. Because you don't believe that not wearing a seatbelt creates any harm or injury or Only loss. to me. Uh, and you obviously aren't going to sue yourself. No, but I'm... Yeah, see, that's the point. Compensation nation. Now, you, yeah, you're going along like... Do we want to uh, go there? No, you don't want to go <laughs> You've there. You've only got two you? hours. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go there, but it is a compensation... Let me just... Let adverts. me just... St I'm going to start reading out some texts here, because otherwise we're never going to read any out, and people are going to get upset, and I'm saying to text in 87788, uh, keep them short, otherwise they get cut off and I can't read them then. Um, there's somebody here, I think it's John, saying, it's so good to know there are men like you in the world. Thank you, John. So I don't know whether they're John or they're saying, thank you, John. But anyway, there you go. Um, oh, my God. Uh, there's a, one here that's been cut off again. It says, how do mothers who have had their children stolen for forced adoption and fathers denied their parental rights after divorce take their children back? I think we're going to have to get back to that one, don't you? Because that's a bit down the... It's down the road. There is, um, we do know of something that happened uh, recently that I can't quantify, I can't validate it at all. Um, I'm trying, we're going to try and get some validation. Is this notice. to do with a person? Yeah, human basically, being a, a lady had her four children taken away, and about two or three days later, the social services brought one of the children back. And when the mother questioned the social services, she said, Well, the reason we brought the child back is because we don't own it, you never registered it at birth. Well, they actually said this. Mm. I did actually see that on your website, actually. No, we're trying to quantify it. What I'm saying is, I get this information for... I work very closely with a gentleman called Brian Gerrish, and Brian gets some well, most he was, phenomenal... He was, I, sh I, I should say, he was supposed to be my guest last week, but unfortunately he suffered it's, a bereavement in yeah, his family. Yeah, his poor mum. I know, I was there. And um, he couldn't come. Yeah, we're I was trying I, to get him back. I've been working at Brian's house to work his house. So, yeah. What a small world. Yeah, yeah. No, we're really good friends. And, and Brian gets the most colossal... He said... He gets, like... Um, what are, They serve them... Oh, so funny. They serve things on him before he's even wrote about the subjects. That's, that's how funny it is. This is how panicky they are, because of this baby P issue and Linda Lewis's is yes. issue about yes. the child who's now 22 and still not allowed to see her parents. Yeah, I mean, these sort of issues. So Brian gets all this information. We get a lot of information, and we suddenly start to, to realise that it's the birth certificate that's, that is the main... It's the problem. All right, we seem to have segued into that. Let's get on to the birth certificate thing, because that's on my list of things to ask you right. about. Right, well, birth certificate basically is, is the creation of the fiction. The creation of an entity that this is exist. the difference between a person and, and a, a human, human being. being. So but this it's... happens, yeah, when you register the child. Yeah, but you're you're told you've got to register the, the child. You're told you must. Now, in legalese terms, in the law society terms, must is synonymous with the word may. So you've been given a choice, because at the end of the day, it's a statute. If you don't register after 42 days, they reckon you get a thousand pound for that, whatever, whatever they reckon, right? Mm -hmm. the truth of it is that you'll get about an eight pound fine. A year later, the Attorney General will actually write you a letter to say, would you like to register your child? They can't make you do it, OK? See, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I have two no, but children, you've done and it, I registered them. Yeah, right? I did it at all. Can you imagine how I feel now? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but... What, so, when you look, look at the birth certificate, right, and look at every part of the birth certificate and look at the wording that's used, and it's incredible, absolutely incredible. But the last bit is the most interesting. The father is classed as the informant. Right? The informant. And his qualification is he is his father, so he knows that there's a child being born, so he can inform on that child. Yes. Right. So what if the still... mother registers the child? A lot no, of it, single it... parents register children, I, don't they? Do you know sure. what? I don't know. That'd be something we could look at. But we've looked at quite a couple of birth certificates to, to quantify this, right? To have a look at this. And, we, and I'm going to do more. Underneath, it says this. This is very fascinating. I like this piece. Okay. This is where you start talking about different jurisdictions. It says... Your name, which is not a signature, it's wrote, and it says the declaration of. Now, a declaration is in common law. The only person who can make a declaration, which is a declaration or affidavit within common law, is one of the most powerful documents within law, because it's a sworn oath of your truth. OK. <laughs> yeah? So you swear that this is your child or whatever. No, 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 no. You're just saying it's a declaration from a human being because he has to act on behalf of the fictionist father, which his name is in capitals, to inform 
the child is there so they can make another fiction out of it. That's how it works. So basically what it is, it's a, it, if you So want, when we register our children... You put them in slavery, you just don't know. They become a bonded slave. Yes, that's exactly what it is, exactly. That's quite powerful stuff, isn't it? No, but it's the truth. Go and look for it yourself. It's the evolution of slavery. Yeah, I know, but if you, the evolution of slavery is something that's quite amazing when you look at the, you know, look at the word slavery and you look at sort of civil relationships between people in a state and people use the word citizens. Citizens, we're not a republic. We're not subjects either. Subjects is uh, we're out, that means we're subjected to the rule of something. Well, we, we shouldn't are, be. No, we, but, are no, 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 no. we are a constitutional monarchy, aren't we, officially? Ah, do you know what a constitutional monarchy is? Uh, do you know what? I have a feeling you're going to tell me, John. <laughs> <laughs> a constitutional sovereign. Very interesting. A constitutional sovereign has, is, is, is locked in constitutional law with no powers whatsoever. They can guide, they can warn, and they have the right to be informed. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's uh, all they can do. Basically, well, what they yeah. are is a mascot. We're paying an awful lot for this mascot, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, no, but you, you, it was needed. It's a requirement for them to, to succeed in what they've done. To get us to where we are now, it was a requirement. And they had to lock a certain dynasty into the requirement as well, using another part of this country as a bargaining chip. What do you mean, another part of this? Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease. <laughs> Margaret, it's like, there's so much to this. It goes all the way back. You know, I mean, Magna Carta, look at the wording of Magna Carta. And pulled me one well, article. I've actually, got it actually. It's funny uh, you should say that. I have a copy of it. Magna Carta, twelve fifteen. Yeah. I've got all the the ones you've highlighted on your website. I should say your website is www.tpuc.org, which stands for. I've written it down somewhere. The People's United Collective. Absolutely. There you go. Anyway, uh, and you can download copies of Magna Carta. Charter of Liberties of Henry I, 1100. Declaration of Rights, 1688 to 1689. Bill of Rights, 1689, etc. on this site. Anyway, Magna Carta. Hmm. What do you want to know? Well, <laughs> what do you want to tell us? Well, pick one of the articles. Well, I think the one you like. point to quite often is 61, isn't it? Yeah, but 61's too complicated for this. You go, go a little bit... Go, um, 38. Page 38, clause 38. OK. In future, no official should place a man on trial upon his own unsupported statement without producing credible witnesses to the truth of it. OK, so what does that say to you? What do you get from that? Um, well, I suppose if you confess uh, a crime... Yeah. ..that's not to be believed by a court without independent corroboration. Brilliant. Thank so you. you really got it. That's a really good fundamental thing because if you've got someone obviously who is is not right in the head, and they're going to you know for and whatever there are reason, like that, yeah, aren't there is. Yeah, there's people out there who really don't. You know, I don't know why, but they're not right in the head. They don't make the right decisions. So you you, you could get someone to admit to something that they haven't done just because they feel intimidated or pressured into it. So that's that was designed to do that. But it says a word there. It says man. Isn't, isn't man in law also a woman? No, no, no. What's the definition of man? Well... One of the definitions of man. Well, law, legal definition of, of man. Of or, of, of or the same quality. Um, you've lost me. Well, of or the same quality. So As you, what? Right. The people the document was wrote for. The barons? Absolutely. Let's pick another one. 38. Well, I think we need 39. to go into this one a bit more. No, no, no. Go. I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. <laughs> Pick a number. If you'd like to <laughs> text in the number you'd like me to pick. Right, 39, OK. No free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights and possessions or outlawed or exiled or deprived of his standing in any other way, nor will we proceed with force against him or send others to do so except by the lawful judgment of his equals or by the law of the land. Guide the world trial by jury. Sorry? It gave the world trial by jury. OK. Trial by a common law jury. But yeah. not all offences go before a jury, do they? No, but they're meant to. That's and the there point. is there is pressure now to end jury trials. Well, and of course there is. Panel of judges. But the jury is the most powerful element in any court of law. Well, they're probably the most unpredictable, ah, aren't they? But if you want to see a corporate court of law work with a jury, look at the Demenzies trial. When you look at the tribunal, because what did the judge say to the you jury? You cannot pass a <laughs> verdict of unlawful... <laughs> 
death. Oh, it's fantastic. I think that was it. I might have got the, the words jury, wrong, but the that jury was roughly it. Can wasn't... null the law if they believe it to be unjust. They use what's called discretion. So the difference between common law and civil law is, or commerce law, UCC go, whatever you want to call it, in common law there's discretion. So the jury could look at something, and they, a classic example, there was a girl 18 years old hung in the 16th century for shock, uh, shoplifting. Yeah? She went up in front of the beak, she was hung for shopkeeping. She actually went up in front of a magistrate. But the jury could have looked at that, and they could have gone, well, she was desperate. Her, her, um, her husband had been press ganged and was fighting abroad. She had no food to, to food, feed her children, no wood to burn on the fire, she was smashing furniture, and all she took was a piece of cloth to try and make something for her child, children to wear. That's what she took. But she didn't actually take it. She put it under her apron and then put it back because she realised someone had seen her. She was hung at 18 years old. A jury would have seen that and said, well, the discretion is, yeah, she did do something wrong. Yeah, we, it is a bit prolific shoplifting at this moment in time. But the girl should not die for that. And that's when they can start to go against. See, the, the, the maximum offence at that time for shoplifting was death by hanging at Tyburn. Mm. She would go on the Tyburn Triangle. Do you know about Tyburn? Well, that's where Marble Arch is now. Yeah, but do you know... Yeah, that's funny. Do you know the Tyburn Triangle? Do you know why it was designed? Why it was a triangle? No, you could, hide, you could hang 24 people at once. Did it have to be triangular? I don't know why they made a triangle, but that's what they made. It's called the Tyburn, tri Tyburn Triangle. Yeah. Anyway, but what my point is at this is, is the fact that in common law there's a discretion. If a, if a, a policeman pulls up a lady for doing something wrong in her car, he believes she's committed an offence. In common law, and she was pregnant, right? In common law, he would say the discretion of the law, I can use the discretion, I'll escort you to the hospital so you can have your child. The, in what we live in, she'd be having a child by the right and the bloody ticket out. Because that's the difference between a corporate enforcement revenue officer well, and I, a policeman. Well, no, I think that's being a bit harsh. I mean, policemen are it human beings happened. too. Well, it might have happened because there are bad people in every walk of life no, as no, well no, as no. there are good I, people. I've got all the admiration for the police in the world. A lot of my friends are police. Well, they're not all of them. Exactly. They stand there while a woman's in but labour and write a ticket out, wouldn't no, they? No, no. If think they so. act as a policeman, but as a corporate revenue employee collecting revenue, there is no discretion. That's why, that's why common law is so important, because it, it offers discretion. That's why a jury is so important in a court of law. Because originally a jury was 13 people. In common law it's 12 and 1, which is 13. They've made it 12. And there's a real significance with the number 13. But the, the fact of the matter is that that jury of 13 people, of your peers, people of the same kind of quality of you, and generally people who would know your character as well, so they could actually generally judge and say, look, yes, this man, this is out of character. Well, you can't always tell people's characters by how no, they you present can't, themselves in but court. The worst villains in the world present themselves in court as decent. But their friends know they're the worst villains in well, the, the world. Well, the friends aren't on the jury. Well, hopefully <laughs> their friends aren't on the jury. But what I'm saying what is I'm if saying they're very good at, at putting the wool over people's eyes. If you're going to judge, if you're going to judge anybody, then you have to know all, everything about that person to be able to say if it was out of character. This is why the peer system was developed. This is why it was there. And President is a complete load of crap as well. Because how can two cases be exactly the same? Precedent, you mean? Precedent. What they call common law was built by precedent. Common law has three basic values that was taken. There were um, ornate values that came... No one actually knows where these values come from. A religion took, got hold of these and made them into Ten Commandments. But the first bloody one says, you should, thou shalt have no more gods. And you get on your knees, you're a servant. You're, you're a slave. But they're telling you who that God is. So it could be anybody. King James Bible, in every court of law, lift it up, Jesus Christ is in capitals. He's a bloody fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying? That there was a human being, but he became a corporation. <laughs> is, the, is the Church of England a corporation? Yeah. They're all Westminster Abbey's corporation in its own right. Westminster Abbey, yes. House of Parliament, members of, par members of Parliament, House of Lords, Privy Government. Council. Mm -hmm. uh, social Services is actually PLC. Okay. Which is interesting. Check them out, Dun & Bradstreet. Go on to Dun & Bradstreet, type in anything you want, your local ambulance station, anything, you will find that they're all corporations, registered corporations. And the classic one is the schools. My son's local school which is, uh, is a trading name of Hertfordshire uh, County Council. If, the they're a, style, is it? if they're a business, 
There's someone invested in that business who wants paying back. Child, as well, I know these academies, these Tony well, Blair okay. academies are... Why are all the public mean. services in this country, registered businesses making money, when they're meant to be public services paid by, by your tax? I won't say mine, because I don't pay it. You. So why are you paying tax, income tax, and a good rate of income tax as well? I've got to say, that's a question I ask myself quite often. <laughs> <laughs> but you're paying such a good rate, and then all these public services that are meant to be funded off your tax money and your council tax money... Well, why yeah, are they registered on, corporations? Well, well, I don't know, but, I mean, I do receive those services to some extent. You know, I do it if the house was on fire, the fire brigade would come round, and if I need to go to the hospital, it's there. You why know, a corporation, so... though? All right, Watford General Hospital okay, is Watford a trading General. name yeah. of the uh, Hertfordshire NHS Trust. Right. So it's a corporation. It has to make money. It has directors, directors that need paying. You know about that, don't you? They're called dividends. Well, uh, I, do, I don't you... know that I do know that about that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no personal experience with Watford Hospital. No, but you know... I'm clever to say I've never been there, but... But you know what I'm talking about. Not about the hospital, but you know about the dividends. OK? You know this, this, is, this is what corporation is about. So why are public services in the whole of the United Kingdom, corporations and businesses, when they're meant to be paid for by public money, our money, your money, your tax money, why are they, why are they independent corporations all part of bigger conglomerate corporations? You've got... Well, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because you wouldn't expect them to be incorporated as businesses. Why have you got corporate courts? Every court is registered as a trading name of the Ministry of Justice. So it's just all about money. Every police, every police days, every police force is registered as a profit making corporation. Okay. The members of the Houses of Parliament are registered as a profit making corporation, which means you are electing new directors. That's all you're electing, new directors. So nothing will ever change, because politics is theatre. It's complete theatre. What you see going on in the House of Parliament is theatre. OK. It's an outer government controlled by an inner. By the advocates. Right. The okay. judiciary. So I think <laughs> what we need to talk about... I mean, we're going to go to a break in a couple of minutes. We've still got a couple of minutes to go. But what, what we need to talk about uh, when we come back, I think, is we need to talk about... How you avoid paying tax, that would be an interesting that's subject. Easy. Certainly that's one easy. of interest yeah. to me. And also about money. Oh, money's interesting. I think that's an Let me read out a couple of texts. Um, somebody says here, if he was injured without wearing a seatbelt, the injuries would be considerably worse and more expensive for the taxpayer <laughs> and the NHS. <laughs> responsible people, and that's how long you get. So don't go longer than that, because I don't know what you say. Presumably you're saying, responsible people wear a seatbelt. Yeah. yeah. OK, there's another one. Attack the messenger. Yep, I got here. Was pulled for car tax. Police made my two kids, seven and nine, sit in my car, engine running on the side of a dual carriageway while I was processed. Well, I guess that's a bit like what you were saying, but she wasn't in labour, was she? Um, <laughs> so I can't read that one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's quite funny, though. Uh, unfortunately, no some, name attached to it. There'll be some choice ones come for us. So we do get one or two good ones. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, to go back to that point about uh, the police um, working for corporations... Yeah, the fiction does, yeah. Do they understand that they're working for corporations? Um, uh, I feel there's some that do, because of the wording you can use. Well, the higher levels? Or... You, you, oh, yeah, definitely. The, the, the inspectors and the chief inspectors are what I call customer services. They come out... If a, if, if, if a police officer's done something wrong and he's, he's going to be... and you put a complaint in, well, especially one that's called dere uh, dereliction of duty, which is in common law. Yes. He'll come out and try to flannel you. He'll say, oh, it's no good prosecuting you. Know, you have loads of paperwork and all they're going to get is a tap on the wrist. It's customer services. Right, we're going to go for another break now. <laughs> Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments for John, uh, text the, uh, the, the word um, EDGE uh, to 8778 and we'll see you very soon. <laughs> Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest tonight, John James Harris, the free man 
Well, John, this has been really interesting so far. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm going to read you a couple of texts before we start off again. Um, absolutely brilliant. Bravo. Isn't it a shame this information doesn't get fed into the mainstream? John should go on question time. <laughs> Ian from North Wales. I don't know if Jeremy Paxman would be as nice as I am, but... <laughs> anyway, here's another one. John, I'm a copper. You're spot on with your comments about police work. Good work. Um, and here's another one. Where can I find out more info from the guy on the sofa? Things need to change. <laughs> well, the answer is go to www.tpuc, which stands for... Uh, the Jones. People's United Collective. Okay. <laughs> .org, so www.tpuc.org. OK, keep the text coming in. Um, oh, there's another one. Why don't I read this one before we get onto the subject? Then they have books that can be audited, or am I just being duh? And by the way, I'm not being anti what you're saying. In fact, thank God for people like you. And then it gets cut off, I'm afraid, because the long ones do. So I think what they're asking that question is, um, these corporations, if they are corporations, like yeah. the hospital and the police yeah. and the courts and all that, they're asking is, do they have books that can be audited? Well, yeah, if they're a corporation in their own life, it, it, it's... You touch on subject, you know, when you touch on these things, you look at the... You, you, you start to dig deep into money and what money really is. Um, and the whole concept. We're so going to get onto money in a second, but you know, let's get into um, it gently, but it, it's, Yeah, but it explains it all because of the book entries. Because if, they, if, they're, cre if they're creating a debt in the first place, and giving it to you, you pay it, then that zeroes that debt. That's basic bookkeeping. Anybody mm. knows that. You don't mm. have to be an accountant. You know, you create it, someone pays it, it zeroes the account. Um, but you you pay in two different ways. There's there's different ways of paying, and there's a, something that came to light was what was called accepted for value, which a lot of people have, have dissed and they said, oh, there's all this information in America, it don't work, blah, blah, blah. We're living proof it does work, because we do it. Now, accepted for value, you only do really on, um, you know, like, sort of uh, companies and corporations... Aren't you that getting a bit ahead it. of yourself? You, you, shouldn't you be explaining what money is before you get no, to... No, no, it, it leads to it. I'll explain okay. what it is. Excuse yeah. me, then. Um, see, when you accept... Right. I get a bill from the tax office for 33 grand telling me that I've got to pay them £33,000. This has actually happened. I've got to show you. That's in no, my no, briefcase. Okay. I don't date for a second, John. I'll show I'm you. I'm surprised before. you walk around with it, though, but, you know... No, I brought it. <laughs> Just basically. in case. There's something... Yeah, when, when people... You need to explain things on there. OK. Now, they're writing to the capital version, they're writing to the fiction, so they're not writing to me as a human They're writing to you in capital letters. Yeah, so I'm... I'm they're, they're, they're John James Harris, all caps. They're presuming I'm, I'm a, a fiction, OK? So they're, they're, okay. They're, it's presumption, it's implied presumption that I'm going to act on behalf of the fiction okay. in their jurisdiction. Right. right. OK? I'm saying I'm a human being and I'm not going to act. I'm not going to act on you. So I get this bill comes through mm -hmm. and they say to me, you owe us £33,000 and some pence and other pounds, whatever it is. Right. It's in a box. I think, yeah, the, the £33,000 would probably do it for me, wouldn't it? Right. Wouldn't worry about the pennies. No, no, no. But, well, it, it, it's all imaginary anyway, so, I I, yeah, it might as well be three pence, cos they're not getting a penny. Um, the fact of it is, the £33,000 is has been generated for nothing. So when it comes to me, I've accepted it has no value whatsoever and sent it back to them. Exactly the same figure in... in so I write it in the box, 33, whatever it is, blah, blah, I'll send it back to them, they can zero out their books. Well, OK, ha uh, if only it was so simple, John. But it uh, is. Well, you're but... basically saying you're accepting it for value. Right. <sighs> OK. A nice, shiny piece of paper. Note. No, 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 piece of paper. Well, I'm sorry, but that is a £20 note. Well, that's what you... Yeah, <laughs> Unless you, you make it yourself. Now, you can take this to a shop and you can go and buy... It's very kind of you, I'll have it now. See you later. <laughs> 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 you enter this shop, you buy goods and services for it, so you actually believe it's real. Yes. I know it does buy me goods and services. Or and one you, so very similar you believe to it's real. So well, what happens is you'll go, that will get put in that shop, and then that shop will pass it to somewhere else or a bank and they'll reissue it. Put it in the it, bank. Blah, 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 blah. OK. Well, one of the two things that... Well, there's three things on here that are quite interesting. One is it has a mascot on it to make it look official. A mascot. Constitutional sovereign. Well, She's like football clubs. Yeah, basically. I'll explain that. OK. And it says it's from the Bank of England, which is a private, registered corporation, that no one knows where the profits go. No one knows who the managing direct the, the, the directors of, but um, might want to ask, ask the boss of Sky 
a little bit about the Bank of England. But... <laughs> It also says very clearly on it, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £20. OK? So, if I take this to the Bank of England and say, right, you've promised me to pay me something here, can I, can, can I have what you've promised? They'll give me another piece of paper, which is completely worthless. <laughs> you know one of those? Yeah, exactly. But they'll take that one, presumably. Yeah, but what we used to say on it, I would... I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of gold. Or yes. sterling, silver. Silver. Pound sterling. Right? Twenty pounds sterling, as you would call it. But because our money is, is fiat currency, it's not backed by anything. There is nothing to back this at all. So in reality, if there's nothing to back this of any value, this is an IOU. It's a promise to pay. That's why it says, I promise. So what happens is, you just say, I'm promising to pay you at some so time. So this is because it's fiat currency, Yeah, because we're in bankruptcy. And fiat, if my Latin is still doing any good in there, is... I think the Bible starts with fiat lux, which means let there be light. I don't know, but I'll take your word on it. Which is Latin. Yeah, and I'll so take therefore, the fiat part of it must be let there be. Yeah. It, all it basically So let means, there be money. <laughs> all it basically means... <laughs> but there means isn't is, any. Is that what you're right. saying? There is yeah, no basically, money. Basically, what, what the money is, the money, in, in effect, is a debt. We're in bankruptcy, so we're in receivership. But we're in Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which still allows us to trade. What we're constantly trying to do is pay back this bankruptcy that can never be done. Because the bankers, the, 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 the private sector, have put so much... The principal and the interest has got to such a, a, to, to a rate now that the income tax that you pay, the rates that you pay, the counter tax you pay, cannot cover this anymore. So now they have to bring in statutes to sell to the bankers and enforce upon the people... More taxes, hidden taxes, all these hidden taxes. stealth taxes, stealth. But, it's, it, but it's not. It's not tax. It's, it, you, what you're, you're, it's basically fraud. You're saying the debt can never be serviced. It can't There's be nothing to back the served. currency. The currency has nothing behind it. Because Gordon Brown, for instance, sold all our gold at the bottom of the market, didn't he? Yeah, but the, you know, at the end of the day, gold... If, if you want to go... It depends how you want to go with this. You can go a number of different ways. You know, I mean, if you look at what gold is, gold is just a pretty piece of metal. That's all it is. What gives it value? Well, I suppose it's, it's immutable, isn't it? Unlike some metals yeah. that rust or, or oxidise or whatever, gold is immutable. You can leave it in the ground for 10,000 years and you can pull it out and, and it's shiny and lovely. So why does that give it any value? I don't know, it's quite... Exactly. <laughs> it's got no value whatsoever. <laughs> it's only got the value that you attribute to it. Okay. So it's the, it's the, if you like, the consumer who attributes the value to something. If you've got a, a bar of gold and you tell me it's worth £600 and I say it's worth a pound, right? The only difference is that we disagree on what it's actually worth, because value is derived by the person. Well, the word, the word pound comes from the weight of a precious metal, doesn't it? Which it would a have been weight. originally, yes. But, and the reason this stuff was designed was because obviously they couldn't carry this, this stuff around. So the bank would basically, I'll take your bank, I'll give you this piece of paper, and you can hand this to people, and if they ever come back, I'll give them the gold that's... I promise said. to give them a pound yeah. of gold or but a pound of... you take this to... A friend of ours took one of these and a birth certificate down to the Bank of England, and she... <laughs> And she went in and asked. They escorted her out of the building and then locked the doors behind her. She would then decide... If... Sorry, I'm sorry, I was, I was reading a text and I completely right. no, ignored no, 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 no. what you said there. Say it again. Right, a friend of mine went down to the Bank of England with a birth certificate and some money and, just said, and, and actually tried. Actually tried it. To right? do what? To get what it's really worth. To find out what they would say. Yes. Well, two security guards escorted her... Is this the woman with the dog? Uh, that's also in your web. I've read her story on the website. So she, so she goes in there, she gets escorted out, and the doors are locked behind her. Mm. She decides to stand on the street and tell everybody what's, what's just been done. She gets descended on in by the corporate employees. And remember that the City of London Police are a completely separate entity. They have their own state, their own um, police force. You know, they've descended on her. She's uh, put into Westminster um, Magistrates Court on, a, Court on a public disorder, which is a statute. For going into the Bank of England and asking for her... No, for standing on the street and telling people that you can't do this, cos she's telling them the truth. She goes into court very cleverly, and I, I really I was admired her so much for this. She I spoke to me, uh, uh, me and Richard the day before. She went into the court and just refused to get in the dock. She refused, point blank. She said, I'm not a criminal, I'm not going in the dock, I have papers, I'm representing myself, I need somewhere to sit, a glass of water, blah, blah, blah. 
Magistrate in the middle chucked her hands up. Didn't know what to do. Clerk come across. Case dismissed. All because she refused to get in the dock. Because they can't act upon you unless you're in that dock. Why is it called a dock? It's maritime law. <laughs> <laughs> Not very obvious, is it? Let me just quit reading a couple of texts before I scroll off the screen. Um, John for Prime Minister from Rose and Mart. Mm. Perhaps not a job you want. Um, is your guest one of David Icke's love children? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, do I have to repay my bank loan? That's Will. <laughs> we get a lot of them. John for Prime Minister again. She's very keen. Uh, all conspiracies are just greedy white men doing what they do best. Lie, cheat and steal from other greedy white men. Wake up. Ah. That's an interesting one, I <laughs> must admit, it's a, yeah. No, it's just white men. Yeah. But, uh, but not everybody's designed to be woke up to this anyway, because it would, it would cause absolute chaos if it... it what it, if everybody woke up to this? What if all the national newspapers carnage. tomorrow had Complete your carnage. story? This, uh, you know, nah, the guts nah, of this programme nah, on carnage. the front page tomorrow. Absolute carnage. That the money is worth nothing if, 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 and but, that you can discharge a debt by simply giving them more. If that's a promissory note, which I understand that it, it is... It is a promissory note, Then all yes. you do to, you know, to... Uh, uh, pay a, a debt is give him another promissory note. Absolutely. So you just go, yeah, but I accept it, here's a, my promissory it, note. It, yeah, now that, that, yeah, but you're going down lines that are very, very complicated and... It's not that simple, no. Then. Because... Well, I suspected that might be the case. No, 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 because you're, you know, I mean, they've, they've signed the system up. It's fantastic how they've done it, actually. I, you, know, I, you shouldn't admire them for what they've done, but they have created something that is just... It is an amazing entity, what they've created, but it's, it's, it's a fire. In, 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 if you want to analogise it, you put a fire and you, it's a fire that's consuming everything. And unfortunately, when a fire consumes everything, the only thing it's got left to consume is itself. And that's what we're seeing happening. All right, well, let's just talk about, about, about you know, how you deal with debts like your £33,000, because you haven't really said, you know, where does that go? I mean, you, you can ask them questions, you can accept it for value. Well, I was told to put me in court. You asked them to put you in yeah. court? And I used to, I... how long ago was this? Um... I've always, I've always had a thing about paying income tax. I've yeah, but, always... but this is a red rag to the bull. I mean, if they're yeah, watching yeah. this programme, the, oh, the no, Inland they're Revenue... They, they crack me up. They're brilliant to talk to. They, uh, but they break. Let me just they say this. If they break. are watching this programme <laughs> and you're going, I'm not going to pay my tax, and oh, presumably a you're a lesson to other people to not pay their tax, then But you've got to know what? why. You've got to know why not to pay it, and you've got to know, understand what, um, why I do what I do. And when you, understand, when you understand that, then, you I mean, people will say to me, oh, well, you're not going to get this service, you're not going to get that service, blah, blah, blah. None of them services are paid by, by income tax anyway, so, this, I, you know, I'm not bothered. This guy, Will, is going, well, so do I? Do I have to repay my bank loan? <laughs> you're very persistent, Will. John, sort him out, will you? I'd speak to him on a personal level about that. So if he wants to contact me after, yeah, I'll teach him on a personal. That's not for um, for broadcasting. Really? Why not? Come on, because, I think our, because no, because our viewers are mature enough to. No, there's there's certain things that you you really need to understand before you can go down certain levels. Income tax really easy because income tax initially what you can use against income tax is um, the 1848 Felony of Treason Act, which is a statute that exists, but it's a very when you look at that statute in, in, in uh, retrospective, it actually says that you're not allowed to um, give aid or support to traitors of the Crown. Right, we're going to get onto this, aren't we, onto the Queen? Well, no, I don't really want to go too much there, but what I'm, that was initially what I used, because what I did is I used, I used that because as far as I was concerned, Parliament were acting treasonously towards the Crown, her, being Her Majesty. Um, so this was ideal. So I wrote to... Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, excuse me for saying this, but I wouldn't have put you down as a, a monarchist, you know, a royalist. I, I, I don't see you buying Majesty magazine every month and no. pouring through pictures of the yeah, royal family. Yeah, but she's a lady. She's a woman. She's, does that mean a human being woman? Yeah, or uh, is that lady does. a special... No, she's a, no, no, that's what I mean. She's a, she's a lady, like the other ladies that are sat across from us. They, they, she's... Are you talking about being respectful toward her? Absolutely, full dignity. Yeah, full dignity completely, because she's a, a member of a female species, if you want to put it that way. Yes, well, you know? gender, yes. If that's... It, Not yeah. a separate species, but... No, 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 <laughs> no, no go down can't... them lines. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um... So, yeah, there is, there is a, a great element of respect, and I know that my father cared for her greatly. 
you know. So Your I'm, father worked for yeah, the royal family, yeah, didn't yeah. he? He was a chauffeur, is that He right? was uh, the Queen's unofficial chauffeur. So he'd do all the unofficial stuff. But what, he was like actually the she was going to secret locations or Oh, something? absolutely not, no. I, he would take her from, like, Buckingham Palace to Windsor or stuff, places like that. You know, we're not... Yeah, you, secret location. You're full of it. <laughs> you really are. Crack me up. She wasn't going to go and meet those alien reptiles. Do you know what? She? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I, I, some I, of the I, stuff though is incredible, isn't it? I, I, it absolutely mind boggles me. I, I'm in fits of laughter with most of it I read. I am in absolute fits of laughter because I don't believe in mumbo jumbo. I believe in black and white, right and wrong. That's it. So okay. to me, magic doesn't exist or all the other, yeah, all the other illusion. It's all part. It's another part of traps, actually. All right, let's talk about. The Queen a bit more then, because you've, you've got on to the Queen. I think you need to, to kind of flesh it out a bit here. If you so your, your father worked for the Queen. Yeah. Uh, you never did, presumably. I worked for the Bowes Lions. You worked for the Bowes Lions, which is... Queen Mum's family, yeah. 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 So, and I know... It, it... Have you met the Queen? No. No, no, no. Did been you meet a... the Queen Mother? I've been in a car. <laughs> <laughs> did she know? <laughs> no, probably no, not. No, I thought not. No. I yeah, no, I went in a car when I was a kid, yeah. No, um... My dad worked for... My dad was uh, uh, from, from Cornwall. He was a very softly spoken Cornishman who was in the, um, in the RAF during the war. And then when he left, he, he started uh, work for a Major Kindersley in St Paul's Walden in Hertfordshire. OK. Um, Major Kindersley passed away and there was a, uh, there was a position for um, uh, the, the chauffeur for uh, Sir David and Lady Bose Lyons. So my dad took the position and got offered the position. Um, part of in in doing in doing that was uh, part of was uh, doing the unofficial engagements for Her Majesty. So I know my dad. My dad had you know, uh, even though I could never ask him because he died when I was young, when I was seven. But I never had the chance to ask him. But I know in my heart. Mm. I know in my heart that he he had, he was a, he was a pure gentleman. My father was everyone you ever talked to, and you talk about. John Harris, or Jack, as they called him, and a lot of Cornish people get the name. There's that many Johns down there. It's incredible, especially Harris. It's the most prolific name in Cornwall. Um, so they would, if you talk, they would say he was just a gentleman. He was just a pure gentleman. Um, and I know that he respected that because he, was, he respected people and he respected, you know, women as general. He would open. He was one of the old type. Who would open the door, allow a woman to get in the car, and then shut the door after. A lot of respect. Old doors open. Yeah, you know, just. Clear, just, uh, but you wouldn't have to do that if you were a chef, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, no, 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 no. But he did it kind of like outside of the, the, the role of being a chauffeur. Okay, he was just no. genuine, you know, very genuine person. So I know that in my heart that he, he respects her a great deal. And I feel sorry for her family. It's one of the things a guest of yours recently said is, you know, the royal family's been seen, you know, at, at, at a Nazi funeral. Yeah? But it's a member of his family. Well, why I, think that's, I think that's Philip, isn't it? Yeah, but why not? It's a member of his family, so why not? Yeah. Would you not go? <laughs> to a Nazi funeral? <laughs> Pro probably not, no, I no, think. No, 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 listen to what well, No, <laughs> but to, to put it in another context, listen to what me. I'm saying. If you want to mar something, if you want to really, really smash something to pieces, then what you use is every concept you can, so you take stuff. You look at the... I, I've got a relative and he's in the Nazis, yeah, OK, whatever. He dies. I want to go to his funeral. What's wrong with that? He's, he's a part of my family. Does mm. it matter? He's, a, he's still part of my family, no matter what he's turned out to be. Well, that's understandable. I, right. So, but what I'm saying is that's the clever... That's, this is what they use against people. This is why the lies and the knowledge goes out on the internet. I think we need to get back to the Queen here, don't we? I am, yeah, I will get it. <laughs> it takes me a while. But the thing is, the Queen is... It, I don't know if she's been duped. I don't know if she's complacent. I, I know in my heart that she's a good person. I know that Brian says exactly the same, Brian Gerrish, because he was a lieutenant commander within the na in the Navy. And I, don't, I don't think we can talk about what he thinks, really, without him being here. No, but here, it, his point was very, very, very apt, which he, what he made. And his, his point was that he was at a... Um, and there was a, a, a party held, and the Queen attended with a lot of um, top-ranking Navy officials, and Brian asked her a question, is this an official engagement that you like doing, it, or is it an official engagement that you've just got to do because of your position. And she said, no, the difference is with tonight, I'm with friends. And it was like Brian said, I just got a really good feeling from her. Mm. And that's very important to me, because the word friends, I mean, she was with friends, so does it mean that... You know, she's not, I mean, I don't know if I want to talk about how the Queen feels about things, but she's never been very... Um... She's never expressed her emotions very openly, no, she can't, has she? She, she well, can't express I mean, her emotions. Diana certainly did, didn't she? Yeah, she was interested. 
you know. But anyway, let's, we don't even want to talk about Diana because that's a whole other su subject. So, the Queen, now, I think we need to get to you. Now, you declared yourself a freeman of England within common law. Yeah. And in your method of becoming a free man, which is therefore a human being, not a... Fiction. A yeah. fiction, a person. Yeah. Square brackets, capital letters. Yeah. You invoked something to do with the Queen. I mean, I've got a copy of your... Freeman of common law thing. I don't want to read it all because we go... No, mad, it's quite but, long. But, but you, you talk about the Queen. Uh, and you say that you deny and withhold all allegiance and obedience to Elizabeth the Queen. To the, to the precise purpose of providing some defence to Her Majesty's person, royal estate, blah, 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 blah. What's all that about? What it was initially is I... Like I said, I, you know, I haven't said it on camera, I'll, I'll say it now. The web, when the website started, I, yeah, I, I, did, I was totally in the dark about everything that was going on worldwide. And for a process of people just contacting me and giving me information, I started to see patterns. History repeating itself, um, different bits and pieces that I, I and it, it brought me along different lines. And I was talking to a gentleman one night, and he said about Article 61. I talked to another gentleman. He mentioned Article 61, and I talked to another gentleman. That's the one in the yeah. Uh, and these, Magna were, these are constitutional people who know con the Constitution back to front, or as they perceive the Constitution to be. Mm -hmm. um, they also historians as well, so they know a lot about the sort of history of the kings and queens, the descendants, you know, all the different bits and pieces. And I, said, and I looked at Article 61, so I spoke to him, and a friend of mine, uh, Robin, wrote them, them affidavits on my behalf. Was he a lawyer or somebody you No, used no, to... no, but he knows common law. Okay. That's a common law document, it's an affidavit, it's a sworn to make statement of truth. We looked at Article 61, because you could, you, you had to give 40 days. Um, we knew it was resided within common law. It was a very, it's a very powerful article indeed. People argued you needed barons, but you know, at the end of the day, all I wanted to let Her Majesty know and the government know, I'm just fed up with what's going on with the country. The country doesn't work anymore. You're destroying it. As far as I'm concerned, you're the culprits. I'm opting out. So it, when I when I opt out of the system. Then, you know, I'm basically saying I'm not going to pay income tax because of the traitors in Parliament, the 1848 Felony Treason Act. I'm not going to do anything at all. I didn't understand anything about contracts and contract law, commerce, or fleet, or any of that. So that was the avenue then to start something off. That's the only way I could see. So, uh, what I don't understand then, uh, and I understand why you might want to become a free man and not become, and not any longer be this person, capital letters, yeah. that was a fiction. I can understand why. But I didn't know. I didn't you know that, that at the time. But, uh, no, I can understand all this. I'm, I think, you know, that's understandable. But, but I don't understand... I don't understand why you have to mention the Queen in this and withhold allegiance to her. It, this is kind of weird to me. It's like... It's not. Say, it's the Queen's great. She's being held hostage by Parliament. Kind of saying that in here. But it's kind of what's happened, if you understand what they've done with the law. But why do you care about her? Why would you put that in your thing about being a free man? Why can't you just go, I want to be a free man... Uh, you know, the money doesn't the money doesn't exist. Uh, the parliament is is corrupt and and illegal. The reason you I... know Magna Carta is being disobeyed, if you like. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, why why this stuff about the queen? It's like I look at it and go, this is kind of weird, isn't it? It's not weird. It, it was it's an ancient law. It's an ancient law that says that we have a right. It, you know, at the time, I believed in the law. Uh, as constitutional law as being our constitution. So you're saying it has to be about the Queen, then? Your act of no, no, becoming no, no, a not, free not man? No, not now. Not now, no. This, what I was trying to explain to you, this is evolution. What I've, what's happened to me is I've evolved with the information I've received from people, so I've taken a lot of information over a lot of time. Every, at every point, at every stepping stone, there's been some form of recourse. Article 61 at that time was recourse, but that led us into something because Article 61 says, enter into lawful rebellion offering no violence whatsoever. So you do it peacefully. So you don't have to... You wouldn't mention the Queen now, then, if you did it now? What? If I, no, I'm afraid... John. I'm afraid we're going to have to go for another break. <laughs> so, once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments to John Harris, do so now. Text the word EDGE, your message to 8778. See you very soon. <laughs>
<laughs> We've covered a lot of the ground, haven't we, tonight? We have covered a lot of ground. Yeah. yeah so, well. you're a free man now. Yeah, but... You've made, right. this decla you, you've, the, you, you did, you made this declaration. Who did you send it to? The Queen. You sent it to the Queen. Yeah. And did she acknowledge it? Well, we got, um, I got... I got a third-party reply from Sonia Bonici, which is like the chief correspondent, which everybody gets anyway. Which uh, says, thank you for writing to the Queen, if you'd yeah, like a colouring yeah, set, or... Yeah, it just said, oh, thank you for your letter concerning blah, blah. It was about the EU, and we just... Brian Gerrish made a phone call and asked Sonia Bonici what she meant by the word the EU, because I never mentioned the EU in... in you didn't write about the no, EU no, at no, all? No, no, absolutely not. Um, but she... We now know that she presumed, when I was talking to the EU, from the phone call, she presumes it was because I was talking about the traitors in Parliament. And there's a lot of references all over the place about the EU and the traitors in because Parliament. Because a lot of people think that we're selling yeah, ourselves to the... Yeah, but you, you need to, to know, the, the EU doesn't exist. It has no legal personality whatsoever. It doesn't exist. It, it, people say it hasn't had an account signed off for 14 years, but if it doesn't legally exist, what accounts are we talking about? It's not a corporation, then. It's not. It's not. It's not. We found no. one that isn't a corporation. No, 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 no. It's just a way of trap in Europe. It's just... It's a what trap? Just a way of trap in Europe. They couldn't a get it with the Commonwealth. They got it with, you know, something else. Well, I don't want to go down them lines, cos you're entering into a whole different realm. Let's talk a, a bit more about your becoming a free man. I think that's important, because yeah. I think there are, there are probably people out there... I know, look, I've just... Um, <sighs> can you repeat his website? This one says he, he's great. So, yes, it's www tpuc.org. Um, royals have no divine right to be royals. It's mm -hmm. a title afforded to them by those who dream it fit. Royal blood doesn't exist. Fiction. Paul in Warrington. Divine right was was from the Stuart Kings, which was derived from... Um, it basically came out of uh, the, the Papal Bull Templar, which who were actually the ones who created... The Templars. The Knights yeah, Templar. Yeah, the, the Papal Bull Templar basically created Temple Bar, which is the advocates, the inner and outer... Temple. temple. Oh, where the courts are. Yeah, in, in this country. The barristers. Yeah, basically what you've got is you two-tier everything. You've got, a two -tier, you've got a two tier community which is the socially dominant and us who uh, are fooled by a promise to do the hard work. The only valuable thing in this country is what we do for a living every single day. Because if we didn't do what we do, this country stops working. And the hierarchy can't afford for that to happen. So they have to fool us into giving us a promise. We'll promise to pay you at some time. So, but it doesn't exist. There's a lot of other things that you can go along in them lines. I don't want to... It's, we haven't got enough time to talk about it. And they are quite complicated, some of them as well. But we've got two-tier everything. Two-tier law, we've got a two-tier community, which is basically one world society, which is what is being created. The socially dominant want to maintain their social dominance. That's basically it. It's not... People say new world order, blah, blah, blah. It's the socially dominant. They, they've, they've got everything. Well, social, they want to I mean, the word it. social to me sounds a bit kind of soft and cuddly. You know, you say socially dominant. I mean, this is, you're talking about society, aren't you? Yeah, but that's the socially dominant members of a community. They're the ones who will do anything to maintain their social dominance. So they're not quite as cuddly as you would like to imagine. Well, no, I, don't, <laughs> I don't particularly imagine that those people who do control yeah. the Federal Bank and the Bank of England, yeah, indeed but they, they do. They are the socially oh. dominant. And, and in a way, um, everybody, the, the whole system's been teared down. So anyone, we talked about this, every, anyone who owns a company, who keep, employs people, who pays them a promise at the end of the week... With fiat currency, which is just a yeah, nothing. What are you maintaining? Your social dominance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, though. You're, a slave, you're enslaving people. I'm enslaving people. Yeah. Okay. You're doing exactly the same, but see, because we mimic what's given to us. Everybody mimics the same thing. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, half the people who hear this information will start to realise that, uh, yeah, this is, really is what's going. And then what you do is you take the very simple system that human beings live by, which is in communities, and mm -hmm. you put ism on the end of it, and you completely destroy that as well, which is what they did. Everything with an ism. Socialism, like capitalism, communism. communism, Marxism, socialism, they're all isms. Anti disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, 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 oh, it cracks me up. All of it cracks me up because it's just, when you understand what's going on and how simple it is, everything that's complicated in the world has a simple foundation. We have a, a motto on the site the truth is simple, mankind makes it complicated. That's it is absolutely true, true because it doesn't sure matter. That is true, yes. Yeah, if you, if you take the most complex building, it's still built on a set of foundations. It, there's nothing. Except the World Trade Centres. Clearly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a circular <laughs> argument, isn't it? Let's move it out of text. Yeah. Uh, 
Dave Ellison has written, 1989, the 1989 Children Act overruled common law, which states the father owns them. Can they do this? Dave Ellison. No. They can't overwrite they common law. They cannot overwrite. See, common law... I, I know Dave as well. Um, common law is, is, is... Everything comes from natural law, common law, the three, the three basic principles. Nothing can overwrite it on a human being. But then you, you, when you enter into the world of commerce, which is Admiralty and Fleet, when you enter into that world, then you're then dealing with fictions. Remember the, children's of, the children of fictions. They're dealing... The social... Well, they're, 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 uh, they're yeah, capital get, letter names no, 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 are their example. fictions, if you example, like. Is that right? what you're saying? Is yeah, right, I'll give you an example. they're human beings, aren't they? Right. Tell the, all the, everyone in the audience, go and get your V5 document for your car and look at what it says. It says a registration certificate of the registered keeper. keeper. Yeah, it is the registered keeper, I know right. that, yeah. Now, how could they possibly take something that is lawfully yours, i.e. the car, and crush it if you don't put tax on it? Well, hold on a second, they don't... It, it, the reason it's keeper is because it might not be yours, it might actually belong to a finance company, for instance, or it might be a no, company no, 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 car, no, 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 and you're the registered no, keeper. No, 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 no. If, it, yeah, if your issue is with the word keeper... That's fair enough, that's absolutely fair enough, a company car. Yeah. But the finance part of it, it's still registered to the DVLA. The DVLA need to know who owns that car because the registration, that's why they'll take the car and crush it. Now, well, they don't do that very often, do they? they... Uh, what, they, they do take quite... Why well, would take them off the side of the street and take them down a compound and charge you extortionate costs for keeping a car because you might have parked somewhere they deemed that you can't park? You haven't broken no common law, you've not committed a crime. There's no loss, harm or injury. So they've stolen your property. In common law, they've stolen your property. They've caused you a loss. You've lost your vehicle. Now, take that concept one step further. If you're only the registered keeper, that means that you signed over the ownership, the possession of that vehicle to the government. But when you sign that... Yeah, because what, apply... V5. No, right, apply, you submit a registration of application. Submission is to bend to someone else's will. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You register... When you register something, you hand over possession of it, and when you apply, you're begging. And it's implied that you know what you're begging for. Look the words up yourself. Look it up for yourself. Hmm. Now, this is why the, the social services can take children. Because the fiction's theirs. They you've own signed the them over when you sign their birth Absolutely. It's the same principle. And it works with houses, it works with cars, it works with children. Anything you register, you have given away possession of it. OK, well, here's a really good question. Jamie from Norfolk. How can we free ourselves from the stranglehold of central bankers and the current debt-based economy when they own all the mass media weapons? Well, we've got the internet. It's the most powerful entity in the world and it can't be stopped. Well, I don't know. They're trying, aren't they? They can't stop it. It's a living entity in its own. They'll tell you that there's one pipe comes in and it goes to one building in, in, in London and they can shut the whole of the internet down. Talk to anybody who understands the internet. That comes in in so many different ways, they physically couldn't shut it down. Another thing is, they need it more than we do. Well, another thing is Edge Media TV, Channel 200. Keep watching. <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, no, so the, the internet is, is, is mimicking the way that, that human beings should really communicate. Everything we've got to communicate with nowadays, we think we're so connected as a race, but actually we're more disconnected than we could possibly imagine. Do you think so? Yeah, because we've been, we've been conditioned, they use dumbing down techniques on us. Look at, the, at, look at mainstream media television. I don't want to go into the realms of it, but they call it programming for certain reasons. Watch people go into a trance when they're watching it. Just watch it. Talk to someone. Offer them a cup of tea. Do you want a cup of tea? Huh? What did you say? Like, th this happens. Is you... that the uh, Strictly Come Dancing effect, is it? Possibly, yeah. I, they probably, yeah, I wouldn't want to watch it. No, Quite I honestly. Don't. No, it's not... I no, managed to miss no. it somehow. No, I don't. I don't watch any real television. I've no. watched one of your shows. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, that what was... About, what about the other ones? What was wrong with them? <laughs> Well, you don't watch TV, you don't watch it. I watch it on the computer, so anyway. You can watch it online, www.edgemediatv.com. Watch online. You can watch it live or you can, you can watch programmes that have gone out in the past. So, basically, anything you register is not yours anymore. And that's where the fiction, this is where the commerce comes in. But, see, under common law, no law can be created in this country if it, 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 and, and be applied to common law unless it reinstates or reinforces common law. 
So if anything to the contrary of that, anything that's, it, it, that, that, that goes completely against the common law principle, cannot be reinforced in common law. And common law is created by declaration, which is declarations by the people or by a monarch can do it. The 1351 um, Treason Act, although it's a statute, originally it was declared by a king, so... Whatever that is. You've got the 1351. I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> but there's an argument whether that could be common law or not. Um, yeah, because it's a declaration one. and it was made into a statute. But a declaration, generally, it is a declaration by the people becomes part of common law. Can you make a declaration? Absolutely. I did one with my affidavits. That's a declaration. But it doesn't pass into common law, does it? It's simply... Yeah. It's about I'm, you, no, though, no, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. It passes into You couldn't into pass law. common law... Listen, you couldn't make a declaration about me, for instance, could you? Oh, no. Only about yourself. You make a declaration about yourself. That's what an affidavit is. It's a sworn statement of truth from you. All right, well, let's talk a bit more about this affidavit that you did, this, this declaration. Well, I'll tell you, can so I just... You... One, I would like to expand on one point, though, okay. if you don't mind, no, because this... All the affidavit achieved in the end, now we know, was to allow Her Majesty, the Royal Household and the Foreign Commonwealth Office, where they ultimately end up, let them know how many people have done this and why they're fed up, OK? They know the country how doesn't work. How many have done it? Well, we don't know, because I don't want to ask anybody. I just... I'd, but we, that was what it did. What I come to the determination of is this, and this is very simple. Under contract law, a birth certificate was done on your behalf. But it's a contract at the end of the day. But it's not made with my cooperation, is it? Absolutely. Because at the age of whatever, Absolutely. a few days... So, every, so that being the preamble document to create the fiction, that means that every document off of that is null and void. It's illegal, it's void. So in commerce law, it doesn't exist. So when you get your national insurance number... It's all, yeah, it's all farce. It's all farce. But... I suddenly come to the determination as this. I was born free. As free as the wind blows. Absolutely. <laughs> I was born free. My freedom does not come from a man. It does not come from a woman. It, it, I was born free. And no one has the right to take that away from me. And I'm free because I say I am and not because the government give me a piece of paper. So having said it and done it in a certain way, you are a free man now. Yeah, but I'm free because I say I am. OK, but what does that mean now? Tell me what it means. It means to me that... Sorry, can I, can I just backtrack you there? You just said, I'm free because I say I am, but you did something. You can't just say, I'm free, can you? You're yes, saying... of course I can. Well, I'm yeah, but board. you didn't just say you're free. You did this. You made this declaration. But at that time, that's what I... I that's what the stage in, on the path that I'm walking, that's where I got to. And I believe that to be the right thing at that time. There's other times if you want to go and troll the website and look at it, you'll see I, I was talking to people about political parties, I was talking to people about other things, but I had to talk about them subjects to be able to get other information to come to me to understand what them, real, them subjects really are. That's, what I, that's why I needed to, to, to... You need to go into something to understand it. It's like... How many people say, I oh, know how you're feeling, but it's like, if you, if, you've, if you were an alcoholic and you get counselled, generally the person counselling you is an ex-alcoholic because they're the only people who really understand what you're going through. And how many times do we say to people, oh, we, we, oh, I know how you're feeling? But if you've never lived that experience, how could you possibly know? You couldn't. OK. You know, so I, if I say I'm free, I'm free. And I don't want their system in any shape, form or fashion. I can't wait... But you wait. are part of society, whether no, you not. like it or not. absolutely well, not. Well, you walk down roads that have been paved by taxpayers. Oh, this is and... great, yeah. Oh, it's been paved by taxpayers, not well, corporations. Well, somebody's paved them. Not corporations. Well, uh, they may well be corporations. What I'm asking you is, how do you reconcile being free with being uh, a recipient of some of the benefits of the society. Uh, name the benefits that I get. Well, if your house burns down, for instance, the fire brigade will come out. I haven't got a house. Well, you have somewhere you live, don't you? I stay in places. OK, well, if the place you're staying in tonight... Yeah, but it's not mine, a... so why does it affect me? The person well, in the house... Well, it would do. House, OK, well, your possessions... The person your... in the house, the fictional person, can call the fictitious fire brigade to come and put it out. Well, it's not a fictitious fire, is it? <laughs> But they can call it, they can... See, that's the point. I've, I've, I don't use doctors nor hospitals, I don't use anything. But that's perhaps because you're fortunate enough to be healthy. But what if you become unhealthy? What if you need... If I become unhealthy, I become unhealthy for a reason. What is this? This is like sort of uh, predetermination or something, Absolutely, is it? absolutely. What happens to me happens because it's meant to happen. If, I'm, if I was meant to have crashed without wearing a seatbelt and gone through a windscreen, then that would have happened, and me putting my arm wouldn't have stopped that. 
But it's a bit kind of submissive, and you're not that submissive, are you? Because no, but I'm if not you're, submissive, if, I'm in but, partnership. Yeah, That's a whole different... If you're saying that whatever happens, happens, karma, you know, and all that is the will of God, if you like, then you wouldn't have made this declaration to become something different. You know, you're saying that you were sold into slavery inadvertently by your father, registering you at birth, and mm. then subsequently with other things that happened in your life, and that's all karma and fate. You were meant to be a slave. Absolutely. But now you're not a slave. But I need you to be a slave to understand what slavery is. But you need to go through a windscreen to understand what wearing a seatbelt is. If that's a lesson that's going to be taught to me, yes. OK, so you learnt the lesson of slavery. See, it's all about choice. You you're can. given choice, aren't you? Every single day you can make a decision for yourself. You don't need someone to make it for you. The problem is we're allowing people to make them decisions. In terms of what? Paying tax and... Well, everything. Everything, and... everything that you do is, is your own choice. You, you, it, the, the natural law that we live by, or we should live by, is inherent. It's in us. We don't have to be told it. Just because we choose to ignore it does not give someone the right to say to us, you have to abide by this. But even if people know what's right and wrong, and I think probably most people do know what's right and wrong... Of course they wrong, do. But even if they do know what's right and wrong, it doesn't mean they're going to comply with right and wrong, does it? No, but what, what, what actually um, funds that? What is the power behind it? Why do people do things wrong, generally, for what? Well, for advantage. And where does advantage come from? <laughs> I don't know. Where does it come Greed. from? Greed. <laughs> Greed, OK. And well, what yes. is money? What is money? Well, money's a tool, isn't it? Money's of, just a wherewithal. Of. Money's not a measure of your worth, Money is, it? is a, a tool of. Uh, you're going to say what? Greed? Greed. What's materialism? But hold on, no, Greed. no, you can't say the money's... It's like this woman who was hung for stealing a piece of cloth. Yeah. It's the equivalent of stealing money. She wasn't greedy, she was desperate. She was stealing something that didn't exist. Well, she, no, a piece of cloth existed, didn't she? But she, wasn't... But she could have stolen the money to buy the piece of cloth, <coughs> to, to dress her baby. But okay. that wasn't greed. So not everybody who's involved with money, which is a tool, is greedy. You know, people who want more money than, any, than they could possibly spend... No, but everybody is. Everybody monopolises. Everybody. It's natural. It's greed. This is a system we live in. Well, it's about security in. for a lot of people. People think, security what if? From what? What if I get sick? I'll need money. What if I do this? I need money. What if, you know, I need money? You people don't necessarily have money, surely. Uh, for the sake of just having money. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are in that position. Yeah, but if you, you, you're living in a world that revolves on the stuff. Well, that, yes, that's and it's certainly fictional. true. Well, so you're I, living in a fictional world. So you think all this is an, it's an illusion and you just can't even see it. Well, I, 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 The illusion is because you run say a company, not saying, you have employees. You need your employees to do the work they do, so this, this show is broadcasted. But to de make them do that work that they do, you need to give them to promise to give them something at the end of the week. What they don't realise is they're absolutely getting nothing. They're getting a promise to pay at some time if, that will never be made. But if you have a £20 note in your pocket, as you do... Yeah. You have it in your pocket so that you can get home or you can buy food or you okay, can... OK, yeah. And you know that it's worth having, cos otherwise you would have left it on the table there where you were showing I'll it I'll quite happily give you it. I don't want your £20, but you want to retain it for the things you can buy with it, don't you? The, yeah, and that's what you, you, it gives you the belief it's real. Well, in a sense, it is real. No, it's it not might real. be completely. How can it, it, might, be real? it might be a promissory note based on wishful thinking, and it might be some big, colourful con like the Wizard of Oz behind his curtain. <laughs> and I'm happy to entertain that idea, and I think probably most people watching this programme are happy to entertain that idea. But nevertheless, a £20 note is a £20 note, and you can go and spend it, and you can get food or and that's lodging. The illusion or... You, that's the illusion you live in. But you that can't survive it. without money, can you? I do survive pretty much without money. Yeah, it's no. hard. It's very, very difficult. Um, sure but I've, I've, I've made a commitment to what I do, and I always said that I would do everything that I possibly can to stop what's going on. I will stop what's going on in some way or fashion. I don't know how it's going to come about. It's coming about soon as well. Things do you, are do going to change. Do you think we're on some kind of cusp moment where... Something's... I don't really want to give sort of any reason. I just feel that there is something um, emanating at this moment. There, there is an energy building up that is just phenomenal at this moment. And a lot of people are feeling it. A lot of people... Are, you know, people say, well, I wouldn't like to live in a, in a happy world and there's, there's not this and there's not that, but, you I mean, cos you, you'd be bored 
it, can you name a time in your life where you've actually been truly happy and you've actually boredom's ever entered into into it? You know, it's not something that they don't run together. Things are changing and they're changing naturally, and they have to be allowed to change naturally. Okay. There's a very simple thing that's going on that people will not grasp, and it it, it goes into sort of like I don't know concepts that people are not ready to accept. But man's control of the earth has been relinquished. Let me ask you some questions that, that have come in here. Do you think the current recession has been orchestrated, and if so, by whom and for what? That's Lydia okay, in Cornwall. Right. The, the current recession is... You, people say it's being orchestrated. It's just something that fractional reserve banking will, will end up doing. It cannot go on. If they set about now, to the end of their lifetimes, they could never create enough paper money to warrant what they say exists. Mm. They could never do it. And the more you create, if you create another £20, that makes that £20 worthless. Mm. And that's worthless. Well, that's the hidden tax, that isn't it? Inflation. Is worth, 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 worth. Inflation is the hidden exactly. tax. Exactly. But it's all based on something that doesn't exist in the first place. OK. Here's another good question. Can you consider being free and being tagged at the same time, starting with the identity card? That's Vincent from Belfast. I want... I, yeah, I don't really understand that question, but how can you possibly be free if you're tagged with uh, an identity card? So you would refuse that? Absolutely, answer. point blank. OK. And they wouldn't try and enforce that with a statute that I wouldn't consent to. OK. They, they're not, they can't bring that in through common law. No, of course not. So they've got well, to use a statute. So I won't consent to it. So take your card and do okay. whatever you want to do. Here's another it. one. This is from Jamie <laughs> NFLK. Don't know what that meant. Oh, Norfolk. <laughs> yes, internet allows truth to be shared, but why are the masses not revolting? Why are so many still so ignorant? What needs to okay. happen to reach the masses? You don't need to reach the masses. There's enough people who already know what they've got to do when they're You mean there's a critical it. mass? No, the, the, you don't even need a critical mass. You just need individuals. Every walk of life, judges, magistrates, the, the MPs, people in government, civil servants, they all know that there's something very wrong. They all know there's something very wrong, but they're caught up in this materialistic world. Biggest thing is status. Status. Why do you sit on a chair that's higher than me? <laughs> I didn't design the set. Exactly the same as a judge in a courtroom. He's higher I than you. It's intimidation. Do you think I'm here to intimidate you? No, 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 you? not at all, but that's society showing its true colours. That's the persona. I am this person, I will sit higher than you. Can I sit over here? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's it there. <laughs> no, seriously. No, but I'm just giving an example of society. This is how status works. Statute comes from the word status. It's the legal position of a person or a thing. OK. This is what... It's all about it. What we live in is a society that is just solely dominated by socially dominant people who want to maintain that. They've created an illusional fiction called money to keep us doing what we do every day. The only valuable thing in this country are the people and the work they do. That's all that's valuable. John, we've got about less than a minute left. So what do you want to say? What do you want to say? It's, it's all coming to some kind of head. I'll say one thing, and all I'll say is this, is if England was a car, who would be its engine? <laughs> Come on, you must say more than that. No. If England was a car, who would be its engine? Who would be its engine? The people. And what happens if the engine stops? The people are the engine? Absolutely. The power is with if the people? It, it, it absolutely it always has been, and it always will be. We've just been fooled, that's all. We've been duped. Final word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much to everyone for watching our special two-hour show and to those who sent text in and thanks to my special guest, John James Harris. Um, if Mandy would like to phone me offline, I'll answer her question. <laughs> if, you've not, if you've enjoyed the show, please tell all your friends. Please look out for our exciting new set and opening title sequence in the new year. Until then, happy Christmas and remember, they're watching you, watching us, watching them. Cheerio.